All right, let's go. Hello there, Portal Non. Some of you uh, may uh, know him from the My Little Wife forums where he's posted about the uh, CTB project, otherwise known as Crossing the Boundaries. He's been he is a very knowledgeable man who has had multiple, very many experiences uh, with astrally projecting and lucid, lucid dreamings, as well as using uh, entheo. Uh, what's the word? Entheo. Anthropy. For you know, for substance, entheo. Uh, uh, ethnogenics. Ethnogenic substances, and otherwise, uh, otherwise, uh, sorts of things to, to help reach over and cross the boundary. So, this is a man who I only have known for about a month and a half, and yet he's been quite an inspiration to me. And he has inspired me to um, crawl out of the depressive pit I was and to focus on, on uh, reaching a new boundary, a new dimension, which is going over there. So, um, I'll defer to him, and will you tell us a bit about yourself? Uh, yes, absolutely. Thank you. Uh, I'm Portal Anon. I'm living in Colorado, and I have been experiencing other worlds, dimensions, planes, whatever you want to call them, for several years now. Uh, I reach these worlds through lucid dreaming, astral projection, use of ethnogenic substances, uh, there's actually a great number of ways that, that me and others reach this other world. So, let's start off out talking about the nature of this other world. Uh, yes, go on. In, informally, we refer to it as dream world, for lack of a better name. Uh, yes, this world is dreamlike in a lot of ways, but is very distinct from that. Dream world is, to the best we can tell, uh, a different plane of existence. Uh, the precise nature of it is unknown, but what we do know is that a large number of people, uh, maybe as many as 10%, have had experiences in this other world. We will lucid dream it, or astral project there, uh, or in some way interact with it. This other realm uh, has beings, creatures, uh, places, that many people would consider to be fictional, like uh, the My Little Pony universe or the Star Trek universe. It also contains uh, religious worlds, uh, where you could uh, meet and interact with a variety of religious figures if you so choose. So you're saying that that what in, for example, in my uh, my childhood years, my young teenage years, I would always used to have very vivid dreams and imaginations about going out and seeing other worlds and going out and and meeting up with other alien creatures in the Star Wars world or in the fantasy worlds, so that, that basically would say that, yeah, those worlds do exist. Yes, uh, part of CTB uh, research is the postulate that these other worlds, be they fictional, you know, classically considered fictional or religious or uh, alien, uh, do in fact physically genuinely exist and that we do have the ability to contact and interact with this other world, and vice versa. Oh, well, I, in a way, I did always imagine that in my deepest, darkest heart of hearts, but it's something that I never until recently, when I got into the whole pony waifuism, waifuism thing, never considered to be a, a real option. And I'll have uh, to say that, I'll have to say that, that, uh, there is almost a thing where you kind of feel like the more people believe in it, the more that it's actually real. Is that is that is there any truth to that? There seems to be. All we have is what we've observed. Uh, and, the, and our observations seem to tell us that the more people focusing on a world, the more, in some ways, the more developed it may be. Or in my personal interpretation, the more we are able to access it, uh, implying that it is pre-existing and fully developed, but the more people that are focusing on it, the more we are able to contact it. Uh, there are several interpretations of this, but that happens to be mine. Indeed, all, many of us spent our childhoods dreaming and thinking about these other worlds and, and other beings. Uh, there, 
there may it may be the case that that children are more able to pick up on Dreamworld, more receptive to it. You know, I I, I have to admit that I feel almost like a, like a bit of a a bit of a klutz or a bit of embarrassed in a way how now it's ten years later, ten years ago I was some impressionable, curious, and conflicted young man who started researching into. Egyptian mythology and Egyptian reconstruction religions and basically each like modern day cults that were based off of ancient Egyptian religion as best they could conduct them and I would worship Egyptian gods like Anubis and Kemet and and Set and then I got caught up in and and then <laughs> Because, you know, Egyptian gods were half animal, half man. I got caught up with furryism and stuff like that after that. I completely forgot about that. But now, I'm after 10 years, I feel I'm being drawn back to the religious aspect. I'm like, what the heck? It's, it's just so weird. But I feel like this is always how it's meant to be. been. I always feel like what the world is that I see with my eyes is not the world that I was meant to be with. And that there's always something else and greater and more spiritual more esoteric thing out there. Oh, absolutely. Um, with response to the Egyptian uh, notion, uh, I personally know Anubis on the other side, and, and we have long conversations. Um, it, it, Dreamworld contains so many different worlds and so many different beings and creatures, it, it boggles the mind. And yes, the notion that you know, Star Trek is real, and the Egyptian gods are real, and, and My Little Ponies are real is, is a radical notion, yes, but one cannot ignore uh, the repetition. People experiencing this all over the world, over and over and over, and having strikingly similar experiences, it, may, it leads us to believe that there is, in fact, at least some phenomenon going on. And part in the first stage of CTB crossing the boundary research is to better understand this phenomenon. Mm -hmm. So how do we go about doing that? You said that you you've uh, managed to recruit a number of people from HN and uh, your other places. Oh yes, I have recruited a number of people, uh, both friends and people I know in person and online, uh, in a variety of different places. Uh, we, I've collected, a, I've recruited quite a team of researchers. At this early stage, we are going to start by collecting data, uh, writing documents, reading occult texts, and generally analyzing uh, what the information we have access to. Hey, dude! If it comes to occult texts, you know I've got a bit of a, <laughs> I've got a bit of a head start in a way. As I said, I started off this whole thing ten years ago reading occult texts, reading the Egyptian Book of the Dead and all that type of stuff, but then I got sidetracked with my attraction to animals, like uh, humans with animal heads and stuff like that, which yeah, made me think about furries. I'm not kidding you. I, I that, that furry stuff got me completely sidetracked for so many years because I started off with being interested in that Egyptian, Egyptian religion, the Egyptian reconstruction religion, the Egyptian um, occultism because my interest in the whole animal hybrid human thing and then they they took my whole sexual interest in it and subverted it so I completely lost so much of that so I, I'm pretty much like a filthy pervert well that's not entirely unheard of um, everyone seems to have their own story as to how they they first got into this but uh, and I don't want to go to too much detail here, but it often does turn sexual, uh, being unlocked to this, to this very open uh, world with, with all these, these beloved characters and figures. It, it absolutely can uh, become romantic in a lot of ways. Um, moving on, uh, once we have collected enough data, we're going to start performing testable scientific experiments to see if one can, in fact, uh, in a manner of speaking, send another person a piece of hidden information that can be later confirmed. We have a number of experiments we're designing where we're going to probe and test uh, these phenomena and try to get information to drop out, you know, verifiable, 
reproducible information. Uh, or, uh, alternatively, if we cannot get verifiable reproducible information to fall out, we can conclude that it is not something that can, in fact, be tested by our means, sort of like looking for a unicorn in the sock drawer with a metal detector. Uh, we may not even know if these tests are exactly the right tests we need to be doing, but we, but it is a place to start. Well, it is, indeed. It's better to start off with some place than rather not do anything right. Now, of course, the ultimate goal of CTB research, why it's called crossing the boundary research, is to create a portal or, or a transporter or something, find some way that these beings from dream world can physically, like you or me, come here, or we can physically travel there in physical form. Yes, um, yes, of course, that is what our goal is. And as I said, that is, you know I've told you about my own experiences with the astral projection, and I do want to have that again. I do want to be with the ones that I love again. And you do too, right? Absolutely. I have a lot of loved ones over there, uh, and I would love to be able to, to hold them and be with them. Um, everybody has a lot of very deeply seated needs and reasons why they want to conduct CTB research, why it's so personally important to them to cross the boundary one way or the other. Uh, I won't be getting into to my personal reasons right now, but... Um, uh, oh, no, it's no, these no, 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 don't feel any reason to do that. Yeah, there's, the, the, the notion is, though, that because so many people experience this other world, and because so many of them have such intensely important personal reasons to cross this boundary, it has not been hard at all to recruit a growing number of researchers to our cause. And that is very heartening. I have not been able to talk with all of them, but the, but the fact that I know that there are people coming for us, and joining up in our in our uh, in our project is is uh, it is very it makes me feel better. Yep, absolutely. Now, we'll be getting into the exact nature of dream world, at least our postulates on it. We'll be getting into our scientific experiments we're going to be conducting. Uh, we'll also discuss uh, some of the, the existing occult information we found, as well as going into more detail about how we might be crossing the boundary in a future episode. Um, uh, also, in a different video, we may be discussing ways that you yourself may be able to open your mind to dream world and experience this yourself, maybe even join the team. Oh, it's very good. The more, the merrier, right? Absolutely. We need as many people as we can to help us out with this. Because Absolutely. God knows we've got so many who are actively working against us. Oh, that's absolutely true. There, there are always going to be haters. We have a not an just, extremely not just haters like like organized political and religious organizations will be going against us for whatever God knows reasons they are have. Well, no doubt about that. But I, I'm not going to address that right now. But the we we do admittedly have an extremely radical notion, uh, and the notion is laughable to I'd say the average person. And it is a radical notion, and superficially, it seems kind of nuts. But, you know, so was the Earth being round, so was the notion of the relativity of time and space, so was the probabilistic nature of the photon. Uh, over time, we see a lot of crazy notions that were at one time extremely radical and actively worked against uh, come to fruition. So, uh... I think given the number of people that experience this and the the bizarre occurrences we have that seem to validate it, uh, just given this mound of evidence, it would be folly not to research this. And we need as many people working on this as possible, people that experience it, people that don't experience it, uh, skeptics that can that can push us and try to try to to get better better things to fall out. Uh, and everybody's welcome. To, to come and, and join this discussion and see what happens. Well, 
I think that's a very good. Uh, do you think that's a very good spot to end for now? Yeah, I think that's great. You know, the call to action is usually where you end. Yep, exactly. Um, so uh, let's see. Let's see about this. Stop recording.